Back in 2015, I produced a video series on a shootout between popular 3D printing slices on my trusty Wanhal Duplicator i3. But let's step forward to 2017 and things have changed a lot. Actually, so much that I'd say that video I did back then is completely out of date and I would not actually reference it. But things have changed so much that I can't actually see it being possible to do a shootout between slices in 2017 because we've seen such a dramatic change in the 3D printing space. For example, now you can buy a 3D printer for $150 US or even less. And also you can get incredibly powerful slices for zilch. So in this video, I'm gonna go through my top three picks of free 3D printing slices, say that 10 times fast, and I test them all out on my Tronxy X1 3D printer, which is a 150 US dollar 3D printing kit, just to make sure they all work and you should be able to use them on any FDM 3D printer. Let's get started. Okay, so kicking off the list with Slicer Prusa Edition. So I did test Slicer back in 2015 and it was powerful, but it was a little bit difficult to use. So just Joseph Prusa has gone a long way into investing time and effort with his dev team to make Slicer just that little bit better and easier to use. And it now has some incredibly powerful features in it, such as 3D infill, which is called cubic infill, and the ability to vary layer heights using gradual layer changes for areas you want to print quicker with less uh, less uh, detail, and then areas you, with detail to print with finer layer heights to resolve those curves nicer. So it still has that you know utilitarian look on it, but it does have everything you need in a slicer, which is the ability to preview your prints before you go send them. It can do support material, and it actually even has support for multi-material now with their upgrade. Some of you might be wondering though, why would I suggest a slicer that's only for the Prusa 3D printers? Well, it's not. And let me just quickly show you, because this is important how you can change the bed size and details and print settings to match your machine. So you just go to print settings and see it's got original Prusa i3 Mark II, but I've got some other ones that I've made. So for example, I can go to bed shape and change my bed shape here. You can even do a delta printer, you can change it to circular, and let's say we're changing it to the Tronxy X1, so 150, then 150, okay. And then when we go to save it, don't override it, just enter your new printer name. Tronxy X1, just like that. So once you've got your printer saved, you just select it from the dropdown like this, and then yeah, we'll just dis discard those changes and the platter will update to suit, and you can start printing from there. One major limitation of the Slicer Prusa Edition is the, the rotation and orientation of prints. It is still kind of archaic. You need to go to object, then you can rotate like this by entering specific numbers, but it is a little bit difficult to use. So try to have your models object, your objects oriented correctly before bringing them into the Prusa Edition Slicer. But apart from that, you can just click Slice, Slicing speed is not bad. In all of the pro programs we're gonna test now, really slicing speed is not painfully slow. So unless you've got a model with millions of polygons, you're not really gonna notice any major lag or issues with slicing. Let's go to preview here. And under the preview menu, this is the most important part. You can check your G-code before committing it to the printer. Then you can just export G-code onto your SD card and send it to your printer. I was really happy with the results using the Slicer Prusa Edition considering I didn't change anything other than just the bed size. So this is a Bowden style machine and this the settings are designed for a direct drive extruder. So I could definitely improve the stringing and improve little dags, I could remove those. But yeah, overall the accuracy is fantastic and um, I could definitely use this on a day-to-day -day basis on the trunk seat. Okay, let's move on to the next slicer. Next in the lineup, we have Cura. So Cura again has come a very long way since that video I did in 2015. In fact, it's now a completely rebuilt new version. We're up to 2.6, completely different than the old one. And it has an incredible suite of features. Personally, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of the Cura layout, but it's still one of the most popular free slices out there. And it's developed by Ultimaker, specifically for their machines. But again, like the Prusa Edition Slicer, you can define your own print settings in here quite easily for other printers. So, so if you wanna add your own printer specifically into Cura, you just go to settings, printer, and then add printer. So it has lots of defaults for, of course, all the Ultimakers you might be, might be printing for. 
but of course there's custom as well. So let's get a custom printer. We can do Tronc C X1, add printer, and then we can go through all the settings you want to change to define your print bed. So for example, the Tronc C is 150, 150, 150. It does not have a heated bed, your machine may, you may turn that on and off. You can define the center, if the bed center is zero or not. If you're not sure, then uh, maybe consult the forum for your printer, whether it's not, usually it's not though for a Cartesian printer, usually it's in the bottom left hand side corner. And you have print head size, that's if you're doing sequential printing, wouldn't worry too much about that. Number of extruders, and of course material diameter is very important. If you're running 1.75, enter that. And if you're running 2.85, 3, then enter that as well. End G code and start G code is important. I don't really want the machine to prime itself, so that's what it's got default for Ultimakers. I'm just gonna remove that completely. So we'll just get rid of that. And um, we don't need E0 either. Actually, we don't need any of that. <laughs> we just want G28 home to start and then at the end, yeah, that's fine. So we'll do finish and there we go. So we now have our new custom profile and you have all of these settings here on the left hand side to change. And you can actually, uh, you can simplify it hugely by just going to recommended settings or you can go into way more depth with custom. You can even, you can even go to more depth than this by you know, changing the visibility here of different settings. Cura has gone insane with custom settings and you can really dive in deep if you want to, but uh, for everyday printing, you probably won't want to turn a lot of those on. Like I mentioned before, you want a good G-code preview. So Cura does allow that. So you go to view mode and then layers and you can see your G-code preview. Um, they have improved it since previous uh, preview modes in in Cura before it used to be very hard to actually see what was going on. They've actually made it a lot better now and you can you can show travel movements that sort of thing. So that's really handy to make sure your print uh, to, to double check your print before you actually commit it to the printer. I'll be honest the print I got off Cura was the worst of the lineup. I'm not sure exactly what happened here. It's a little bit a uh, little bit munted but the rest is fine. It might be a cooling issue and um, it's probably a settings issue as well to be honest. But it is still decent and I could definitely tune it to make it print better. The actual beams that didn't go all munted are actually really clean. And yeah, I could definitely use that as well. But again, like I said, Cura for my personal choice isn't my favorite slice to use. That's just me. And for number three, we have Idea Maker. You may have never heard of Idea Maker, but I've been playing with this for the last month or so. And I honestly think this is one of the underdogs in terms of free slicing programs. So Idea Maker is produced by Raise3D, who make the N2 Plus massive 3D printer I've been testing out. And they, they produce this software for free. You can download it. You don't have to have a machine to try it out. And the really cool thing is they haven't locked it down to their models. So you can go into the software, go into printer, current type of printer, and you can choose one, or you can also go to printer settings and add one. So you can add a new printer, just like I showed in the other software. So for example, you could add, again, Tronxy X1, go through, change the build diameter, sorry, build width, build depth, and height as well. Don't change any of the steps for millimeters or XY compensation unless you're getting incorrect sizes. And again, with offsets, we don't want anything there. And primary extruder, PLA 1.75, just like that. So in my opinion, Idea Maker is actually one of the best in this lineup because it offers manual supports. It's actually the only one in this lineup to offer manual supports as well as some really high detail settings within the uh, print parameters. But for example, I can just go to support and then I can choose a pillar size, create auto supports, oh, overhang angles too great, let's go to 30. There we go. So you can add supports in like that, but you can say, for example, I wanna remove this one, I'll remove this one, or you know, I wanna add in my own. For example, I can add it in there, and add it in there. So manual supports is fantastic for really detailed models where you don't want to just let the auto stuff take control and put support where you don't want it, or leave out areas where you do want it. Also, you can change the pillar size to be really large if you want to give something a good supporting area. So I've only ever seen this sort of layout in Simplify 3D, which is of course uh, the same price as the Tronc CX-1. 
So uh, it's really cool to see this in a free bit of software. And if you go to uh, go to Slice, I really quite like their profile layout. So if you go to Start, you can choose the printer, and then it has different settings based on that. So, so I have a default here, for example. And you think, okay, there's not much options here. Well, you can go straight into advanced and then you, you can change things. Again, very similar to Simplify 3D. I think they may have cloned a few things or taken very much inspiration from it. For example, the fan control, you can change fan control layers. Uh, retraction settings there. There is no ability to do custom profile, uh, custom multiple processes, which is fair enough. I wouldn't expect that in a bit of free software, but you can do multi extrusion printing as well. And I'll just uh, close that. So once you're happy with defaults, you never have to go in and change them. You can just save them as separate, separate out, separate defaults here, and then slice. Uh, it's clever enough to say, do you want to turn supports on? Uh, yes, that's fine. And of course, like I mentioned before, you definitely want a G code preview. So here we've got preview of our uh, of our print. This model, of course, doesn't need uh, support. I'm just using it to demonstrate the manual support capability goes up like net like that the brim seems to work quite well and the results of idea maker are pretty much the same as the results of, of slicer a little bit more stringy because i think my retraction settings were a little bit more conservative than this than in slicer again very easy to tweak to get it right and i think for a bit of free software it's pretty darn powerful there's a lot of other settings like the cutting you can change and cut models in the software as well and also the rotation is a lot more intuitive than it is in slicer so definitely give idea maker a go if you're keen to try it out i also really like the sleek black interface it has so there you have it guys if you've just gotten a new 3d printer and it's like a cheap kit or you're just getting into it you can use free 3d printing slices with no issues they're not going to have the full suite of features that a paid solution might have but as you've seen they're still pretty darn powerful and they've come an extremely long way since 2015. let me know in the comments if there's another slicer you would recommend i know there's loads i haven't even mentioned in this video that people do swear by and that's totally fine choose the tool that you're comfortable with but uh, in, in this lineup, at least, I think Idea Maker is probably my favorite. And I'd like to see other people try it out and see what results they get. If you enjoyed this video on Makers Muse, guys, and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you on board. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Happy printing, guys. Bye.